Well, it's very good to be um, talking with you now. I'm only sorry it's by video and not in person. I could say that uh, I'm away at an award ceremony picking up a large and prestigious literary gong, but if I did say that, I'd be lying, which of course is what Charles I did so royally. And it's this historical figure, Charles I, uh, the former king, that I'd like to concentrate on just for a moment. He's the only English monarch to be executed which immediately sets him apart, wearing an extra shirt on that cold Whitehall scaffold at two o'clock on a January afternoon in 1649. It was the end of a difficult journey for, for everyone. Uh, Charles had spent the last 18 months of his life in various forms of captivity, uh, eating well, lying well, scheming well, very well, uh, but escaping badly. He wasn't good at escaping whilst also having an affair with the remarkable spy mistress, Jane Forwood. It sounds like fiction, but it is in fact history, and uh, is chronicled in my historical novel, The Soldier, The Jailer, The Spy and Her Lover, The Last Year in the Life of Charles I. I'm usually found writing the Abbot Peter murder mystery series, but when I came across this story, well, I just couldn't believe no one had told it. I was saying, you know, why has no one told this story? I asked sort of rhetorically to myself, and when I discovered no one had, I thought, well, I'm going to write that story. Uh, and there are many moods to it. There are many moods. Of course, it has got comedy um, a plenty in it. And as a, a former writer for Spitting Image, I enjoyed recreating that. One of Charles's best attempts at escape uh, was thwarted when he gets stuck in the window of his bedroom. He's meant to get out of the window and jump down into the courtyard. He thought that he could get through the bars, but he couldn't. He was lodged there in the window. He was wedged like a wet leaf in a drain. But then there's uh, sadness. Uh, there is sadness. Uh, there's the well-documented final meeting between Charles I and his two youngest children, the only two children still in England. Um, the night before his execution. It's a, it's a very uh, moving and difficult scene. One couldn't say that um, Charles handled it well as a father. You, I think you learn a lot about Charles in that meeting. And then of course there's, there's the farce of the King's trial, uh, which despite the outcome did not go well for the prosecution. The wheels came off on day one and no one ever got them back on again. At one point, a soldier actually got up onto the stage where the king was and spat in his face, hit him in the left eye. Uh, and Brian Ricks would not been out of place at the organisational and legal car crash that was the king's trial. And then, of course, there is the manoeuvring and the political turmoil uh, in England, the sense in England post-Civil War um, of what now? You know, how are we going to be ruled? How who is going to rule us and how is that going to happen? How will they rule? You know, the levellers were asking unheard of questions like, shouldn't everyone have a vote? Which of course was ridiculous. And then of course the ranters were asking, but shouldn't the king be elected? Uh, and then everyone was asking, uh, with the king in captivity, is can a monarch really survive on less than 14 courses for his evening meal? That's another big issue. And then, of course, all this time, all this time, um, with the king's wife, Queen Henrietta, in exile in France, there was the affair with Jane Forward, and the king burnt all his letters, many letters, to Jane the night before he was killed. Though in the end, in the end, the king's head was ripped from his body uh, with an axe, simply because no one could trust him. You really couldn't trust a word Charles said. And of course he was as stubborn as an oil stain on satin when it came to the rights of the king. The intriguing Jane Horwood, intriguing on so many levels, uh, was written out of history by the royalists. They wanted a holy martyr. Uh, they, they didn't want an adulterer. But she's not written out of my story, no, not at all. And her with Charles and with Cromwell and the whole host of conniving, the confused and the convinced, uh, a story is played out which 
Well, I mean, you couldn't make it up. And so I have it. I commend to you and your genius the story of the last year in the life of Charles I, the soldier, the jailer, the spy, and her lover.